Hey, welcome back to the Teaching Church. Once again, we are going to challenge church tradition. We're going to cover and explain the real actual place of Jesus' crucifixion and burial and many other things. I'm going to disprove the traditions that Jesus was crucified and buried inside the walls of the city and the gates of the temple of Jerusalem at what is called the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. Today's going to be a lot of information. I literally have 30 pages of notes and have to make a 15-minute video, so here we go. Tradition, like I said, has you believe that Jesus' crucifixion and burial was inside the city of Jerusalem at what is called the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. That site is visited by thousands of people every year, and that site was founded by Constantine and his mother Helena in the 300s. That site was actually a pagan temple, Venus, built in 130 A.D. by the Roman Emperor Hadrian. Hadrian was just another Roman emperor that hated the Jewish people, despised them, just like Constantine did. You have probably heard Israel called Palestine. Hadrian is the one that came up with that name to stick it to the Jewish people. Okay, there's a whole story behind that. He also renamed all of the maps Palestine. It's not Palestine, it's Israel, and it will always be Israel. Many of your maps in the back of your Bible probably still have that name Palestine. So another interesting fact back then, there was a famous church historian named Eusebius. I have one of his books, actually. He was Constantine's little scribe, and he changed and rewrote some of history and church history to fit Constantine's wants. Eusebius wrote that the Church of the Holy Sepulchre was the spot Jesus was buried, okay? And that bothered him. And years later, he recanted his writings and said the actual place of Jesus' crucifixion and burial was on the Mount of Olives. So here we go. In this video, I will have verses and pictures for you, okay, that will really help you out. But before we get started, I want to show you this map that I drew. Okay, it's a really bad map. I'm not a good artist. So while we go along here, you will have an idea of what we're talking about and the places that we're talking about. <clears throat> so picture over here. This is the city of Jerusalem. This rectangle is the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Temple Mount has to have a temple. The square is the temple. Okay? This right here is called the Kidron Valley. Okay, it's a huge valley that runs almost around the temple, okay, the Temple Mount. And it's in, uh, mentioned quite a few times in the Bible, and it has to do with end times and the battle of um, Armageddon and prophecy. This right here is all of the Mount of Olives, okay? And this right here is a bridge. The Jewish people call it a couple of different things, okay? One of the things that they call it is the Bridge of the Red Heifer. And this right here, okay, in front of the temple, is called the Eastern Gate. It's, it's kind of interesting. Jesus' last week, his Passion Week, he stayed on the Mount of Olives with his good friends Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. So every day he would go down the Mount of Olives, cross the bridge through the Eastern Gate into the temple and the city. And when he was done that day, he would reverse the route, obviously, and go back up on the Mount of Olives and stay with his friends. That's pretty interesting. Okay, so let's now step back into the Gospels and place and picture yourself at the crucifixion site of Jesus. The Bible tells us that there was a Roman centurion, probably many centurions up there. And the Bible also tells us that there was many other people at his crucifixion site. The Bible tells us they all witnessed two things, okay? A huge earthquake and the temple curtain torn in two, which was probably caused by the earthquake. That's the way God wanted it to happen. Those happened when Jesus took his last breath. Why do I say this? Because in order to see the temple curtain torn in two, you had to be standing at and on a specific spot or place. The book of Hebrews tells us that Jesus was crucified outside the city walls and gates, not inside Jerusalem. Inside is where all the traditional sites are located. That's wrong. So, in order to see the curtain torn in two, you had to be standing on the Mount of Olives to see the temple curtain torn in two. Let me give you an idea of how big that temple curtain was. They say it was like 30 feet wide, 60 feet tall, 
and anywhere from four to 18 inches thick. You couldn't cut it with a chainsaw. To witness that, to see that, that is why the Bible tells us that the centurion said, this truly was the Son of God. So this is one clue that Jesus was crucified on the Mount of Olives. So let's go on. I want to mention something else. The Bible tells us that Pilate hung a sign over the head of Jesus when he's being crucified. This is Jesus of Nazareth. He is king of the Jews. And the Bible tells us that many people saw that sign and they read that sign. Why does the Bible tell us that? Because all of the people traveling to Jerusalem for all of the Jewish feasts and festivals came by the way of the Mount of Olives, over the bridge, through the Eastern Gate, into the city. Why were all of these people traveling on the Mount of Olives when Jesus was being crucified? Because it was Passover. Last video, you have to watch that. On the Mount of Olives is where these people read that sign, where they saw that sign. So Jesus was being crucified here on the Mount of Olives. And all the people were traveling here to Passover. So obviously they were able to see and read the sign above Jesus' head because that's what the Bible tells us. Also on the Mount of Olives, it had many mikvahs. Mikvahs aren't baptism. Mikvahs are Jewish baths where they... Uh, uh, they ritual and ceremonially cleanse themselves, okay, um, for any of the Jewish feasts and festivals and sacrifices that they have to perform. So they would mikvah themselves heading to the temple, okay? Before they got to the temple, they had to be ceremonial clean to be in the presence of God. And they had mikvahs all over the Mount of Olives, okay? Another clue that Jesus was crucified on the Mount of Olives. Let's again step back into the Gospels. The Bible tells us that Jesus' body was quickly removed from the cross and placed in a tomb. Why? Because it was almost sunset in a Sabbath. Last video. Okay, you got to watch that video. It ties a lot of this um, video together. They had to get him off the cross and they had to get him in the tomb and care for him after the Sabbath. This tomb was owned by a man named Joseph of Arimathea, okay? He was one of the people who took Jesus down from the cross. He was a Jewish Pharisee, just like Nicodemus in the Bible, that believed that Jesus was the Jewish Messiah. The Bible goes on to tell us that there was a garden tomb nearby where Jesus was crucified. This was the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, the garden tomb. Now, we know that the Bible tells us that Jesus was crucified and buried on the Mount of Olives. Another clue. It's interesting, there are around 150,000 tombs scattered on the Mount of Olives and in front of the Eastern Gate. So this is the Eastern Gate. Remember, there's tombs, graves, and scattered all over the Mount of Olives. They say approximately 150,000. These tombs go all the way back to King David. Today, you could actually buy a grave, a tomb, on the Mount of Olives for a cool $1 million. So kids, you know what my next birthday present is, right? <laughs> Something else that is really cool that I want to mention, okay, since we're talking in these last couple videos about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. It's a verse tucked away in the Gospels surrounded by Jesus' crucifixion verses. It says, just after Jesus' resurrection, some graves were opened and they went into the holy city, which is Jerusalem, and appeared to many. These were some of the graves right on the Mount of Olives where Jesus was resurrected um, because God was giving another sign to people that he was the Messiah. So I just said that there was all kinds of graves here. When Jesus was resurrected, the Bible doesn't tell us how many, but some of these tombs people came out of. And they went into the holy city and they witnessed to people about Jesus' resurrection. God says what he means and means what he says. Those are literal verses. Those are, th that's a hard one to understand and fathom in your mind, but it's a true verse. 
This last clue that I'm about to talk about is going to seal the deal. It's called The Sacrifice of the Red Heifer. It's in chapters 19. Most important sacrifice in the Bible besides Jesus's that is never taught. None of this stuff is never taught. It, it's crazy and it drives me nuts. This sacrifice is laid out in detail for us in the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Mishnah, the Mishnah and the Talmud, all Jewish writings, and of course, the Bible. The red heifer couldn't even have two white or black hairs on it. When they raise these red heifers, the uh, priest inspect them from head to toe with a magnifying glass. That's pretty interesting. This red heifer had to be perfect. It had to be without spot, and it had to be without blemish. Sound familiar? Correct. That is Jesus. The red heifer had to be sacrificed outside the camp, outside the walls, and outside the gates of the temple. Sound familiar? Yes, again, that is Jesus, the book of Hebrews. There has been nine red heifer sacrifices, okay? The first one um, was chapters 19, God gave to Moses, okay? He gave it to Moses, and he was the first one to sacrifice it. Since then, there's been nine. The most famous rabbis in the entire world ever since the rabbis were rabbis, they say the tenth one will bring about the Messiah. This is how that red heifer sacrifice all went down. The high priest would stand here in the temple by the Holy of Holies. Jesus is our high priest. In the Holy of Holies is the presence of God. The other priest would take the red heifer. They would go through the eastern gate, uh, over the Kidron Valley, across the bridge of the red heifer, up the Mount of Olives. Okay, They had an altar up there that was the altar for the red heifer. The priest would get up there and they would sacrifice the red heifer. They would take the blood of the red heifer and they would throw it and sprinkle it seven times back towards the temple and the high priest. After they got done sacrificing um, the red heifer, they would totally burn it and collect its ashes, okay? The ashes of the red heifer and natural spring water were mixed to purify the unclean, and particularly those who came in contact with a dead body or death, okay? They could not come into the tabernacle in the wilderness when Moses was around, and later on they could not come into the temple, and mostly they could not be in the presence of God when they were um, came in contact with a dead body or they were around death. This mixture okay, that lasted of the red heifer ashes and the water, it lasted for years and years and was stored in the homes of the priests and on the Mount of Olives. That way, anyone who came in contact with death could be purified before entering the temple and God's presence. They also, this is also why they built the red heifer bridge because they didn't want to come in contact with any of the dead bodies, okay? Remember, there's tombs and death down there, and that's why the bridge is there. This sacrifice really doesn't make sense or become clear until you bring Jesus into the picture. That's why the Bible tells us that Solomon, who was the wisest man who ever lived, and Moses really couldn't understand this sacrifice, this sacrifice is a perfect picture of Jesus' sacrifice. What does Jesus cleanse and purify us from? Death, just like the red heifer ashes. And he gives us eternal life. And where did it all happen? The Mount of Olives. Something else that's really cool about this, the Bible tells us that the priest who performed this sacrifice became unclean. What happened to Jesus on the cross? He became unclean because he took on the sins of the world. That is an amazing picture of Jesus' crucifixion. Let me wrap this up with the Eastern Gate. In the 1500s, the Ottoman Turks owned this area. They were Muslims. Their leader, Soleimani, rebuilt the walls and the gates and this Eastern Gate. He heard a rumor during this time that the Jewish Messiah was coming back. He gave the order to seal up the gate 
and also place a Muslim cemetery in front of the Eastern Gate. He said a Jewish Messiah will never walk through a Muslim cemetery, and if he does, the Eastern Gate will be sealed and he won't be able to get through it. Soleimani fulfilled a prophecy, and he didn't even know it, in the book of Ezekiel that said that the Eastern Gate shall be sealed until the time of Messiah. Fast forward to 1969, a group of archaeologists, one named Fleming, he was taking pictures of all the gates of the temple. It had rained for two straight days. When he got to the eastern gate, he fell in. He said he fell in approximately eight feet. That was the Muslim graveyard. He collected himself, and right in front of him was the original eastern gate of the Jewish temples. Soleimani built his gate on top of the original eastern gate. That wasn't too smart, was it? And what's this got to do with anything? Well, you have probably seen pictures of the Dome of the Rock and the mosque that is close by it. Well, the founding of this eastern gate, the original eastern gate, tells us that the Muslim-owned Dome of the Rock is not sitting where the first two Jewish temples sat. The Jews do not need this spot to rebuild their third temple. And there will be a third temple because God says what he means and means what he says. And the Bible says there will be a rebuilt third temple. And what do the Jewish people sacrifice their, or um, dedicate their temples with? The ashes of the red heifer. So Jesus' triumphal entry. Triumphal entry from the Mount of Olives. He goes down the Mount of Olives. He crosses the bridge. The Kidron Valley is underneath it. Goes through the eastern gate. Goes into the city and the temple. Jesus was crucified on the Mount of Olives. Jesus was buried in the garden tomb nearby his crucifixion site on the Mount of Olives. Jesus was resurrected on the Mount of Olives. Jesus was ascended 40 days after his resurrection is his ascension. He goes back to the Father. The Bible tells us he left from the Mount of Olives and he will return on the Mount of Olives. The Bible says that Jesus will slam his feet on the Mount of Olives and it will split in two by an earthquake just like it happened at his crucifixion. He will go down the Mount of Olives, cross the bridge, cross the eastern gate into the city of Jerusalem and the temple and Bible prophecy will be fulfilled. So I hope this video helps you understand that those traditional sites are just that, tradition. And everything that happened to Jesus happened to him, his death, burial, and resurrection on the Mount of Olives. So, if you get a chance, follow me on my Facebook, The Teaching Church. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them there. I would appreciate it. See you next video.